It's Ebro in the morning. Laura Styles and the Queen is in the building. Give it up for Mary J. Blige. Give it up. Good morning, Ebro. Good morning. That's Hi, Laura Mary. Styles. Good morning, Laura oh my Styles. God, such a pleasure. To nice meet you. to meet you. I'm so excited. Our very own Angie Martinez was one of the people who brought us our very own Laura Styles. Yeah. Also, so we, she's got to be good people. She got the stand. Yeah, and good. she's one of my mentors. And when I knew you were coming, I was like, I almost texted her too. Like, oh my God, I'm super excited. Aww. I don't even know how I'm going to do, but I'm here. That's so nice, don't yeah. you? I was going to say, don't you miss Angie? Of course. I well, I still talk to Angie Martin. Well, that's your friend, though. Of that's, course. Yeah. So I reach out to her. I mean, her schedules are a little crazy, but check on us. You know, I got a daughter now. I got a four-month-old. So, oh, congrats. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I sent mm -hmm. her pictures of my daughter, and we trying to, you know, have a little dinner and things like that. But, you know, she ran the marathon. She's got the book. She's on multiple stations now. Yeah. She's rocking. She's rocking. She's doing the renaissance. But enough Lady about, thing. I love it. I love it. But so are you right now. London sessions. Yeah, it's all about the London sessions and just going over there and doing that and just needing to do that. I needed to do that. I needed a change. You know, my fans, they, they love me. I've been doing this for a while and I've been doing the same thing for a while. You know, Queen of Hip Hop, so R&B, right. blah, blah, right. blah. And I needed a change. I was beginning to feel like I was stuck. And things were just stagnant for me. And I know people would, you know, accept me regardless if I put another R&B album out. But that wouldn't have satisfied me. Right. I needed to go and do something different. And when I discovered Disclosure, I was like, that's it. And when I did the F.U. remix yep. and it, they released it over there and it exploded, I was like, that's it. Like, what else can I do? You know, and then I, you know, made my way over to London to work with them again to do a whole EP. And then... um. Steve Barnett, the chairman, the chairman of Capitol Records, he's the one that expanded on the idea, made it a bigger idea. And that's how we got the London sessions. Yeah, that's how we got the London sessions, documenting the whole thing, working with Sam, writing with Sam Smith and Emily Sandy, and you know, just everybody. You you know who's I'm yeah. sure people know by now. You know who have right. the album. Well, definitely download the album. We got a lot of ground to cover, but I want to okay. make sure we focus on the London sessions because I think it's a it's a very important moment in the in your career, right? Like yeah, the fact own. that you recorded a documentary, stepped outside of your comfort zone, went mm -hmm. overseas to create a body of work. Mm -hmm. um, it's classic and vintage, it's new all at the same time. Oh, right? It feels mm -hmm. so good. If, you I, love I, I love the I love the album. I have tons of stuff I wanna ask you, so. Okay. So I wanna, can I play the remix? that the disclosure mary j yeah, Blige remix. i want to play F that you? for people yeah i want to play yeah. that get them a little taste of that right because they mm -hmm. obviously know the sam smith disclosure right i when i heard the sam's the latch uh record right, right that's what put me on i didn't know disclosure had 10 albums overseas i didn't know they were this big production crew i had no idea so i learned about them the kind of the same way you're saying you learned about them they did your remix and you were like what is this yeah i'm still learning i didn't know they had 10 albums <laughs> i thought I they may have more. had the, the the two that i know right. about no they I mean, so this is in yeah. a big way you introduced them to a completely different audience right absolutely and it's they introduced me to a completely different audience mary j blige um on ebro in the morning um, Laura Styles, Hot 97. I wanted to say the queen of hip hop soul, but <laughs> I feel like you did that already. Just like you were saying a minute ago. Now we into something else. I did. I mean, it was a, it was a genre of music that I was that I am queen of yeah. and will always be queen of. But I have talk that talk. But I've all <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, talk that talk. <laughs> but in my you know in the process of you know making these records, I've been trying to tell people that I'm more than just the queen of hip hop soul. I'm an artist first. When I put the Mary album, I said this is this is a statement that I'm an artist first. And then when I did the song with Bono and Sting and mm. Elton and George Michael, I've talk. been screaming it for talk a long about time. It. Yo, I love. <laughs> which runs through a resume for us. <laughs> oh, guys, real talk. This is your yeah. 13th album. Yeah, this is my 13th. Now, you recorded everything in the UK and it was nothing but UK producers, right? Yes. So what were some of the challenges? Because I, I would imagine you're jet lagged all the time. Well, well, there was one uh, um, American producer and that okay. was Rodney Jerkins. And he killed it with my love and he murdered it. <laughs> he did his thing. And um, the only challenge was just getting being able to be at the studio at 12 noon every single day like that was different for me because here in the states we go to, to the studio at 4 p.m in the afternoon mm -hmm. oh, okay. and we come home at 4 a.m in the right, morning right. so it was a different schedule so i had to be focused i had to go to bed on time i had to get up on time because i have a regimen that i do i work out i warm up i do all this stuff so Kendall, i had to get up i don't want early. no beef but your, your wife looks great the workouts and all that you know i don't want no problem <laughs> i just want to make sure i complimented her right so it's all good i don't want no problem <laughs> We ain't worry about you, Ebro. <laughs> <laughs> so they had you working. Yeah, it was all working. It was um, 
10 days of record of writing and recording you know like reference vocals and mm-hmm. 10 days of actually recording the whole song or all, all the, the real songs and there was one rest day vocal rest day mm. so it was a grind 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 it wasn't a, you know but it was beautiful though it was a beautiful i had a good time that's what made it seem easy but it was hard it was a lot of work and it was beautiful one of my favorite songs on the album is called therapy as soon as i heard it i felt like it, it spoke to me i mean listen mm. i think with your albums you've definitely You've been our therapy. You know what I mean? You, oh, I mean, yeah. even like with songs like Seven Days, I can still relate to I play it and, and it, it touches me in a certain way. But therapy was like, it was more about just sitting on a couch and talking to somebody, you know? It was yeah. about having a good cry by yourself. And like, what, what were you going through when you were well, wrote well, therapy? Well, Sam Smith actually wrote therapy. Really? It was 100% written by him when I got the reference vocal. And when I heard it, I, you know, changed a couple of words that made it fit me. But I thought it was just important, you know, to sing about something. And Sam made it so, he made it sound like so much fun. Like, because you know Sam has that voice yeah. and he, yeah. he does all these amazing things with it. And it just made me want to sing about it. And um, I just thought it was important to touch on that because people are afraid to talk about it. And it makes mm. it it makes people feel like they're not alone. And then mm. there's more to, to therapy than just sitting in front of a doctor. Right. You know what I mean? And if that's your choice, that's your choice. But, you know, there's prayer, there's meditation, there's painting, there's shopping, there's whatever your therapy the PS, may be. Yeah. Who knows? So that's why I wanted people to know that. See, you know, when Mary said, I can't even make my jokes. I know you you can. Because I would have been like, there's <laughs> sex, there's smoking weed. Yeah. But whatever it is. I'm just saying, but you're Mary, so, I can't really. Yes, you can, nah, Ebro. Nah, I'm not, nah, you don't, nah, I'm not a nah, nun. She's not judging you. Whatever nah. floats your boat. See, I know. <laughs> I'm me. It's me, remember? I know, but still, when, listen, I've known you for a long time, and you've always been so gracious to me, whether we drinking in a club or whether I come by a studio. And that's one thing. But when mm-hmm. I still would. With you, it's your Mary J. Blige, right? right? And so, like, we on the radio right now. I'm not. I can't be talking about you know, what I would normally talk about with an artist when Mary J. Blige is here. But I, I love that we have you, right? And you're somebody that we were able to watch grow and go through all of the things that you went through. Mm-hmm. Whether it's you know you brought up therapy, but mm-hmm. w- you shared yourself. Mm-hmm. and all of that pain with everyone and that's why you're where you are today because you didn't put up any barriers between you and before mm-hmm. social media Mary right. didn't have Mary didn't have any barriers right right like right. you right. know now we see a lot more of artists than we used to mm-hmm. but and it's because of Instagram and Twitter and this but you did that with your music you were brave enough to be like yo I'm gonna use my music for that Right. I didn't even know. I didn't. It wasn't even a plan. It wasn't something conscious that I did. I wrote a letter to myself called My Life in 1994, a letter to myself speaking about all the pain that I was dealing with. Four million people, five million people picked up the album and said me, too. And that created a relationship Mm -hmm. where I felt like, okay, this is bigger than just me. Now I have to speak for the people. Now I have to speak Every time I deal with something, now I have to speak about. I can't give everything, but the things that we can relate to, you know, that I want to give away, I have to give away. And that My Life album started that relationship of where I give. I wasn't like, oh, I'm gonna write an album and, right. and everybody's gonna go go through, be going through what I'm going through. Right. No, I just was in, I was in so much pain. I had to get it out, and I got it out, and I didn't know so many people were dealing with the same thing. Um, Sat nine seventy, bro, in the morning, and. <laughs> Laura Styles and the beautiful Mary J. Blige. I was just commenting on how on the cover of the London Sessions album, you know, Mary, we've we've kind of known it was there, but you had a scar next to you. I don't know what it's from, but mm-hmm. um, it felt like, you know, later on in your career, you felt more okay showing some of uh, your imperfections to us. Well, what I've done is I've, I've just accepted the things I can't change. I can't change a lot of things. And I'm, I, I refuse to have some surgeon chop my face up over a scar or over anything so i've accepted my scar i've accepted my high sharp cheekbones my heart you know my nose my the size of my feet whatever is going on that i shut up (laughs) 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 but this is these are the things that i was teased about you know i was teased about my feet so i thought Mm. you know that stuff sits in your head and you know you think your feet are big so for a long time i was you know i thought my feet were big and i accept that my feet are big if they are now so I accept everything I can't change Mary you do not have big feet All right, you look amazing stop it thank you so um you know the sp- t- speaking of accepting things, I know that you know there was a, a, a headline that went out recently, and we talked off the air about it. And I could tell that 
it it didn't you know you don't get bothered by much but it was about your relationship with Kendall it was about your husband yeah. and it was basically saying that you guys can't have friends of oh, the yes, opposite yes, sex yes, yes. that's what not is, true. what is that that, that's that that was an interview that was taken out of context something I did for an overseas magazine called Stella mm. and it was com the whole interview was like what <laughs> are you kidding me are we in 1994 right now are you seriously talking about I punched the interview in the face and all of this blah 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 what and so the whole thing was taken out of context and Kendu has friends he's had friends before he met me my only my, my problem as a woman <laughs> that I, I'm not going to accept any new female friends unless we're all friends talk about it you, you get what I'm Which saying I like yeah. who's yeah. It, why, why some chick just popping up wants to hang out all the time yeah unless she, if she's married <laughs> it, exactly no I'm not doing that right, right. Yeah. why do you want to hang out like what's your motive what do you want exactly right. but if we're married and there's some new people you know new female new male we all yes right. we can all hang out but i think that's normal though absolutely I think yeah. you, we um we talked about it on the air too and most people call it was like yo why do you have why are you having new friends uh that are of the opposite sex and why wouldn't i know them right mm -hmm. i think that's common in most because people have ulterior motives sometimes and sometimes people can be divisive and i think mm -hmm. even with this interview i think that's what they was trying to do be a little bit divisive on you yeah they was trying to start something do you um do you look at the, these trashy websites? Do you get involved in any of that stuff? Do you no. see it at all? Does it come across your radar at all? I don't go digging and you know looking for stuff. I don't go to blogs. You know, I hear a lot of stuff. You know, I I do Twitter and Instagram. You know, and on Twitter, of course, you're going to see I hate you, bitch, and all this. You know, <laughs> just stupid right, stuff. Right, right. People say that I thought absolute, it was just oh, please. They they people absolutely say horrible things about me to or they try to say them to me, but they think they're talking to me, but they're not. So, you know, but I don't go digging for, you know, mm. for dirt on myself. I Why would I do that? That's I wouldn't think that anybody would be mean to Mary J. Blige. Oh, please. People are very mean. I mean, <laughs> I mean, listen, when you dig, it was probably like a 10 year old boy just trolling. You True. know what I mean? It could be anybody. I'm curious, Mary, because you have Emily, uh, Emily Sande. You have Naughty Boy. Were you familiar with these artists before you recorded in London? Were you fans of them that you decided to collaborate with? I them was in this album? I was familiar with Emily. Yeah. Yeah. And it was um, Steve Barnett, the head of the chairman of Capitol Records again. Mm -hmm. It was his idea that I work with Emily. And I kept hearing, I think Ronnie Jerkins kept telling me, wow, you and Emily will make a, a power team if y'all was to get together. Real. And we did, you know, with that whole damn year. Yeah, that's me and Emily, mm. you know. So <laughs> what record do you want to get to? I know we've we done therapy. Mm -hmm. uh, we had the disclosure record that where they did the remix. What's a record that you want to get to off this album right I, now? I got to get to Dow. Doubt. Doubt. I have to. That is track number two. Yeah. Um, who wrote, what's what's the story? Well, this is a guy by the name of Sam Romans. He's signed to Rock Nation. He's an artist. He's a writer. And this dude is phenomenal. Mm. I think when you see the, when you see the documentary tonight, you're going to see why I'm going on about him. Because when I walked in to write with him and he started writing and singing that song, it was everything that I had dealt with, you know, in my entire life and recently mm. in that doubt is the voice where you know I'm constantly trying to beat up and, and and conquer. He just nailed it. What I needed at that moment. I'm just this song is so important, and because everyone can relate to having to beat that voice of doubt down, and having to beat all the chatter down, and just rise above and do what you do. Mary, um, yes. the London Sessions has a documentary that comes along with it. So, mm -hmm. um, and I know it's supposed to, uh, it's going to be released in January. Yes. What is this doc? What are we seeing? Is it all about recording the album, the London Sessions, in this documentary? Yes, it's all about recording the album. It's all about me personally, just moments of me, it's interviews of me speaking candidly just about how, it, how how much strength it takes to come out of the valleys and how, how how much strength it takes to be to just be around you know as long as I it, it's very it's, it's a lot of personal moments Got and it. there's a lot of um you're gonna see me just very um, just see me raw it's are very you, are you afraid like I'm listening to you talk and it mm -hmm. feels like we're gonna see things that maybe you haven't shown before like it I'm, I'm listening to you describe it are you no, it, I'm I'm not ashamed. I'm not afraid. It's mm. it's it's life, and it's nothing that heavy. It's just you know me and my trials and how I came through them. And but that's new territory for you to do an actual yeah. documentary, right? And, and allow mm -hmm. people that kind of. I mean, usually it's through a song, right? We get we get videos, we get live shows, mm -hmm. maybe an interview, but an actual documentary. I mean, that's new territory. Yeah, we're capturing yeah. moments. It is. Yeah, I I, I don't want to give it all away. Okay, fair I need enough. you to see it because I can't really articulate what you're gonna see, but. If I had to say, you're going to see Mary, period. You know, Mary without 
Ebro in front of her, Mary right. without interviews, just Mary sitting in a park, like just with no makeup on and just sneakers, just talking to a camera. And then you'll see Mary made up, you know, it's it's different cuts from different interviews. I love it. I love you it. know. Yeah. I love it. So we'll look for that in January. I gotta mm -hmm. let you go. I know your time is limited, but I yeah. appreciate you sharing with us and always being open with me and gracious like that. I really appreciate that. Thank yeah, you. We love the love good seeing you. I love yeah. it. I love always. it. Always thank you.